welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is angel baby kyra make sure you like and subscribe go follow me on instagram go follow me on tiktok rp tiktok if it actually gets banned and now follow me on Substack, which is where i primarily am gonna reference today in this video if you haven't seen the first part of this video I suggest you go watch it because that's a very important part as well if you can't tell by the title we're gonna be talking about the brandy melville documentary this is part two the first part i really focused on the employees how they treat the employees the ceo people who are integral to um the company kind of the business practices that were shown in the documentary so today's video we're going to be focusing primarily on the fast fashion aspect and how this documentary just shows one company in this whole fast fashion industry that really has picked up over the years due to social media primarily influencers and like tiktok always having to get the newest things etc and i just feel like personally i feel weird because i like showing my outfits and stuff and it makes me super insecure like being super transparent to like wear things that i already have or have like shoes that are obviously worn that aren't always brand new and i feel like i want to see more influencers that kind of do that and that don't like always have something new in their videos you know something that's more realistic and something that really plays into the sustainability aspect besides just doing the basics of like thrifting or not buying fast fashion buying small business i just think like overall we need to lower our consumption but we get into like a tricky territory of like our economy needs to have people buying stuff under a capitalistic economy don't quote me on that i have no idea about economics even though i took it i did not pay attention it's kind of hard for us because we need to be buying things for our economy to be doing well and right now everything's just like super inflated people can't buy luxury things like saw this discourse on tiktok like lashes and nails and stuff like that and that's where fast fashion comes in because it allows us to buy the stuff that we want stuff that we see on tiktok the stuff that we see on social media for a very low price i feel like everyone's kind of known about the effects of fast fashion and honestly buying sustainable is not actually sustainable for a lot of people <laughs> despite it being like sustainable practices and stuff as fashion companies have also done a lot of greenwashing which tries to like soothe the conscience of consumers that they're actually doing something that helps the environment and a lot of companies have this like when i worked at forever 21 we had like these we had like the leggings that like are super cheap right they're like what three dollars if you buy leggings they kind of went up maybe like five dollars at most but you know they weren't good quality leggings but everyone loved forever 21's basics they decided to come out with a green version so it was like something like percentage of organic cotton materials or something like that and it was more expensive Did people buy it no <laughs> they don't care they wanted the lesser price which i think is like fair because who wants to pay more for something that obviously there's an alternative to be less when we look at this documentary they really talk about they go back and forth between how fast fashion is harming the planet in developing countries especially they really focus in i believe it is ghana uh i knew like the effects of fast fashion before especially when you go to school for fashion i think it's kind of ingrained in the curriculum now to talk about sustainability and to talk about how you're starting a brand ways to be sustainable because you kind of need to be that way in the industry especially if you're a small brand and you're not a fast fashion brand and i was thinking about this today earlier too that because i work for a small business and i cut out the patterns and we take it to the seamstress and we pick out the fabrics there's a lot of work that goes into it especially being a small business and it's like ran by one yourself or like two people you have a very small team and that's like the difference between obviously that and fast fashion uh, sweatshops and speaking of sweatshops i feel like a lot of people have this xenophobia when it comes to sweatshops and fast fashion and i feel like it's kind of ingrained in the western culture if it's made in china that it's it's most likely not the best quality and people kind of assume that because brandy melville says that it's made in italy that it's higher end or that's why it's more expensive and that's just not true fast fashion can happen anywhere sweatshops can happen anywhere and in the documentary it talks about how prado which is in italy had a very they're known for their textiles and known for manufacturing and these immigrants actually immigrated to, to prado 
how to establish their own manufacturing and textile houses or whatever. They have a very large concentrated population of Chinese immigrants there. That became like a place for people who wanted to take advantage of the cheap labor and but but still boasting the made in Italy tag, you know? So I think that it's really well known that people don't really understand that there can be sweatshops anywhere. There could be sweatshops in Italy, anywhere in Europe, a lot of sweatshops in LA. I can go to downtown when I go to the seamstresses. There's a lot of sweatshops there. New York, you know, it could literally be anywhere. It just has to do with the unethical conditions that workers are being put under and also the materials of how they're making such garments. So I feel like Brandy Melva really played into the fact that they're trying to pass it off as designer. I even think they mentioned in documentary that Stefan was trying to pass it off as like designer or something so that was kind of interesting with that when we have this overconsumption of clothing of garments a lot of it gets sent to develop it sent to developing countries such as Ghana in the documentary it shows these women that are having like pounds of textiles on their heads like they put it like kind of in a square cube put it on their head and they're like transporting it wherever they need to go this actually causes obviously it's not good to have um, that amount of weight on your head obviously you're going to get spinal um, injuries, um, things that will mess up your spinal cord, your neck, um, just health problems in general. They actually show like an x-ray in the documentary of how their neck is being like kind of like contorted or kind of um, bent in the wrong way. And even if they stop doing this, it, it, will, it won't really erase the damage that's already done. And also the textiles also get into the ocean. Even though if you take out the textiles, that are like polluting the ocean they show microfibers in the water even though we don't drink um ocean water the fish that are in ocean is what's being consumed by people who rely on fishing as their livelihood who get their fish from the fish market that's just caught from these waters that have these microplastics microfibers in it and that's obviously not good for us to ingest and it it's obviously a really concerning problem and i feel like because we don't necessarily see it on our western front i guess it sounds like we're like in world war ii right now on our western front i feel like a lot of people just don't care and like i said in my last video you can't really make people care or have empathy and i think like it's i don't want to say like it's all doom and gloom right now but i feel like it's kind of to a point where it's kind of irreversible like there's that then it would mean like we would have to like shut down these major fast fashion corporations like forever 21 or fashion nova she and Andy melville but that doesn't obviously not gonna happen i i just don't know what the solution honestly to this problem is um because we can talk about sustainability all we want we can make how many whatever documentaries on Randy melville's on the sheins on the fashion novas of the world but what really comes out of it the reason why i wanted to make the these videos on the brandy melville documentary is just kind of reflective on my own part because i've always thrifted my clothes since i was since i was small because when i would make money however i made money or i had birthday money or whatever i would save it and go to the thrift store i've always just been like i don't even know how to describe it i've always liked going to the thrift i found it more fun going to the thrift than going to the mall and going for clothes i feel like social media definitely was the same how it was before compared to it now it, it's deeply rooted in everyone's lives and it's kind of inescapable at this moment and i feel like it's really i feel like it's a really integral part to how fast fashion got to the way that it is now especially with influencers doing all these hauls and just the cult that it cultivates no pun intended with brandy melville thinking making girls think that they're in this clicky kind of club and if you're in it you're in it and if you're not then you're you suck I don't know. <laughs> I know that a lot of people have been saying like, oh, like you're just mad because you can't fit into Brandy Melville. No, I think a lot of us aren't mad. I think we're concerned that the CEO has SA allegations. They're outright racist, like extremely racist. They steal designs, but that's kind of every fast fashion company at this point. They're just stealing from each other. Fast fashion companies just stealing from each other. I feel like a lot of people that come with the argument, and I roll my eyes all the time. It's like, they're like, 
oh well i can't find any small sizes or stores that have small sizes what are you talking about like uh, what what are you talking about because plus sizes barely became a thing for quite a while and if there was it'd be like 1x 2x it's <sighs> I just like roll my eyes because it's like you are the norm stop trying to pretend like you're not like everything is catered to your body type it's insane and people that who are plus size often defend themselves for this is an example that i use in my step stack is doll's kill and doll's kill is known for its questionable business practices as well a lot of racism as well in their clothing and what they've shown on their clothing and when this was happening i never heard of doll's kill i never shopped there but then when i got more into the like the alt kind of building aesthetic thing i started liking going to like watching people do dolls kills haul i never really purchased anything from there i think now husband bought me my cow boots from there that's pretty much all i bought in from there they've sent me some free stuff um to be completely honest <laughs> like i like their clothes and it is fast fashion it does make me conflicted and i feel like that's kind of everyone's place right now with fast fashion companies i don't really i don't really like give as much leeway to those who are like trying to defend brandy melville because it's a one-size it's all i'm um, not saying that dolls kill is any better i feel like especially plus size people always make a point that dolls kill has plus sizes and now it's definitely diversified its models and its body types and things like that and i think it has a new ceo or something but people are obviously still skeptical of the ethicalness of the company but a lot of plus size people say that's the only place they can really find alternative plus size clothing and why i believe them more than these brandy melville girls is because it's it's parent it, you can literally look and see that can get any kind of clothing in an extra small or small those are the most normal sizes for people and if you do anything more than that but look at you weird like so i feel like that's kind of where everyone's at too realistically yes if we went by the standard of like not supporting businesses due to their fast fashion ethicalness lack of ethics i should say we wouldn't be shopping anywhere maybe we shouldn't be shopping anywhere i think it's the only way to solve this problem but like i've said in previous videos like if you shop in shein and because that's what you can afford that's what you can afford but at the same time be mindful of your practices like when i get stuff for example dolls kill because that's kind of like a comparison fast fashion retailer that has a lot of iffy stuff in its history that i resell it or i donate it you know um to or resell it at a second whatever consignment store whatever i don't throw it away or i like re what do you call it i upcycle it i upcycle a lot of my clothes um that i do have and i just try to do with what i have and i'm the kind of person that really like gets bored of my clothes easily and that's such a horrible mentality that i picked up from social media um and something that i'm trying to work on more and is to not be afraid of like wearing stuff more than once and i know that's such like a first world dumb problem but it's also just something that i personally like struggle with i feel like overall from watching the documentary it did make me feel sick to my stomach knowing not only the the fast fashion i guess the repercussions of fast fashion of brands like brandy melville but also obviously the business practices of the ceo and how he's been able to get away with it as a survivor myself i know that it's really hard to come out with these kinds of things and i know that people will always have something to say or something to put you down try to blame it on you so i really felt a lot of uh, sympathy for the person i had experienced that and that was in fear of retaliation and that's something that i experienced too is that i had a fear of retaliation from my school and from my abuser and just things of that nature and I just feel like it's so normalized and people are looking at, at it like as drama or like tea on Brandy Melville but it's not like these are actual people that are going through these things that have been through these things. It just makes me sick that people are still defending Brandy Melville knowing what they did. It just reminds me of how people still defending my my university after knowing what they did or I guess what they didn't do to protect me or to help me succeed after my abuser did what he did. So I just 
feel like we're kind of at a loss of what we can actually do i just feel like everyone's saying like oh just stop shopping at brandy melville blah blah, blah. and maybe that will help maybe it will put them out of business but it's just the cult-like mentality that these girls have is just so sick like it's it's not healthy mentally or physically for them like at all i don't know where to end this video honestly and i think that's the end of today's video let me know what you guys think in the comments below please be respectful and yeah let me know what you guys want me to cover next i think the next video i'm gonna do is making like i put on my poll on youtube community tab that you guys wanted to have like a video of content creation advice i guess in 2024 and i think it's especially important especially because the tiktok ban is supposedly happening and i got some like stuff from substack and kind of my theories of like where social media is going to be going and how we're going to move forward from here but i definitely want to focus more on youtube because i feel like this is the best platform as a creator and yeah so let me know what you guys think and make sure you like and subscribe and i'll talk to you guys later. i'll talk to you guys next time bye